So in this video, I'm going to be talking about sensitivity analysis uh, and how it specifically relates to when you're evaluating the attractiveness of different projects using techniques such as NPV. So for those of you that aren't already familiar, sensitivity analysis is basically when you do sort of a computation. So for, I'll sort of tailor my explanation to this example that I'm going to be talking about. It means that basically when you do a calculation for let's say NPV for two different projects, that that essentially takes into account a specific set of assumptions or it assumes that a specific series of events will occur. So let's say that you're valuing a specific company uh, using the DCF analysis. It assumes that a company will acquire a specific amount of sales, the fact that its tax rate will be at a specific amount, the fact that it, the company will invest a specific amount into its capital expenditures and so on. So there's all these assumptions in place which give you evaluation. Specific to an NPV, you assume that there's, there's specific assumptions in place which allow you to get to a specific NPV. But what if we want to see what would happen if those assumptions were changed? So let's say we, and I'll bring it back to this example right here. Uh, so we're looking at a sensitivity analysis, so let's say there's two projects uh, and there's NPV of project one and NPV of project two and we don't have this graph yet. We want to see what would happen. So this NPV project is for an asset that generates sales. So we want to see what would happen in case the asset in, in case we generated four hundred dollars worth of sales. That's fine. You would get a specific number here and here and that would be fine. But then what would happen if you generate $420 of sales or 500 or 600 or $1,000? Well, that means you would have to recalculate every single time what would happen. And sometimes it's not easy to just compare numbers on a page. You sort of need a graphical representation of what would happen if that, what would happen if the sales number kept changing. And that's why we do a sensitivity analysis uh, as we have here. So just going over what this specific chart is doing, it has the NPV on the y-axis and the sales on the x-axis. So as you move left and right across the sales axis, it shows how the net present value changes for both projects. So you can see, and this can be very helpful in making decisions. So let's say I run a company and I expect my sales to be around, let's say some, somewhere around the $800 mark. That means we're standing right about here. And I'm deciding between two projects. Well, if I'm generating $800 of sales under that assumption, the NPV of project one barely cracks $50, while the NPV of project two is almost close to $150. So NPV of project two is, is much better for me. But on the off chance that I'm expecting sales that are far, far lower, let's say I'm expecting sales that are about, now it's sort of hard to triangulate here, but let's say about $380. That would fall right about here. In this area over here that I'm and it doesn't have to it's just any num I'm looking for any number that's be like below this intersection point because that's when the line above changes so let's say $380 of sales falls here if you pick the first project now it'll actually give you a positive NPV but if you pick the second project it would actually give you a negative NPV so we want our NPV to be high as possible so the line that is above is technically doing better and at this point, this around the four high, between the 400 and the 600 marks, somewhere around, I'm guessing the 420 or 440 mark, we see that these lines intersect. And if you generate more than this amount of sales, project two is better. But if you generate less than that amount of sales, project one is better. So seeing this graphical representation, sensitizing our NPV to the sales amounts actually lets us see which project would be better given a specific level of sales. Now the good thing about sensitivity is you can sensitize NPV to multiple things. It doesn't necessarily have to be sales. So if you're doing a corporate valuation, let's say you're trying to value a company, you could sensitize the value of the entire company against the sales. Or you could sensitize the value of the company against the capital expenditures or the tax rate. Or more commonly, we use the weighted average cost of capital. Because when you're calculating these numbers in the, for the future, you don't really have that good of an idea. It's just estimates. So if you're sensitizing the value against the cost of capital, the cost of capital takes a number of things into sort of assumptions. So it assumes the market risk premium. It assumes the beta. It assumes uh, the tax rate. So under all those assumptions, as you change them and move them around, you can see that those levers sort of shift your end value for that would be the corporate valuation for us it's the NPV and we see how it changes as the level of sales increase or decrease 
and this is really important and you might be wondering why would a company want to do this that actually changes the decision that a company would make so if you're a business owner you're deciding between two projects you expect your sales are going to be really bad this year they're let's say coming out really really low you're probably not going to pick project two because you know this line is steeper as soon as your sales fall this is actually going to cost you a lot of money it's not going to generate any money for you but if you expect your sales to be really high, you'd want to pick project two because eventually if your sales will cross around the 400, 450 mark and the project two is a lot more profitable because the NPV is a lot higher. So that was an introduction to the idea of sensitivity analysis. In future videos, I'll actually be going over specific examples and how these work as well.